FNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Run my Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark good morning i'm nico dehan welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced natural wild world and uh, this is where we explore our natural health, our rights, and our freedoms. And I'm Paige Clark. Yeah, get that health back. That's what we want. That's, that's for right. sure. It's a beautiful day in downtown Clearwater. Well, no, actually, it's raining. Kind of a little rainy about day. About 80 and... degrees or so, but <laughs> it's going to be raining a lot. And uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the number here is 877-927-6648. Got too many things on my mind here. That's I right. I know. It's a busy day. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I want to make sure people know they can pick up our Health Signals newsletter. The Health Signals newsletter is news you can use. Uh, we search all week to find really cutting-edge articles that can help you be live longer, That's be right. stronger, healthier, and wealthier. And a great article is uh, the uh, medical Madoff, uh, the fake news kind of. Right, the anesthesiologist that faked the data in 21 studies. So when people say, where are the studies, maybe we can't trust some of these studies today. That's right. Yeah, we have to look at them again. That's for sure. Feels kind of cool or odd yeah, after six switch. years. No, we're just going to shake it up a little bit. I think so. <laughs> that means you're on the right and I'm on the left. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, uh, you know, there's a storm going on. I wanted to kind of mention that. And uh, it looks like it's back out the sea right now, which means it could be gaining a little momentum. And then this is the path here. We also had one uh, around our area, too, that... Uh, I don't know if we can see some of this stuff, but I wanted to mention this one. We've got another one coming out of the Atlantic. I use this site a lot to figure out where I'm going, when I'm going. You know, I noticed that about men. Yeah. They always watch the weather. Like we women, like me, this morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think. I, w I forgot that it rained. I didn't think about the rain. I don't think about it, but my brother-in-law is like that, too. Very. It's like, how are you? Oh, fine. Well, the weather's going to be clear. And so, <laughs> well, especially if I'm traveling. And this weekend, we traveled down to Marathon. Yes. And uh, we were looking at this little storm that was right around the Florida Peninsula. And I was thinking that it was kind of move north and that Marathon would be the probably one clear place. And it just ha so happened, I guess, kind of lucky. So right. we have this system going up the East Coast. We have Harvey over here, and we have a brand new system that's kind of coming from uh, the Cape Verde Islands. So this is a really time of year to watch these hurricanes. Yes, this and you is can the storm time. And I also wanted to mention, of course, we talked about the uh, solar grand minimum quite a bit, and that means that these events just last a heck of a lot longer. And you're seeing days and days of rain, both in South Florida here and, of course, uh, in Harvey. And we wish all those people well. And, you know, the reason I mention this is that I've been talking for quite a while about being prepared. And if you don't have water and you don't have food for at least a few days, then you're going to be in dire straits when and things like this And a bug out bag. Happen. A lot of these people that got their homes flooded, you know. Um, I you saw a lot of people saying, oh, my pictures and so forth. You know, you can prepare. Think the worst. Think about a flood. Mm -hmm. You know, many of these things might be saved if you moved them upstairs or put them in an attic or yeah. put them on a higher ground. Uh, always have something ready so that you can take off because we really just don't know. And it, it has been so heartbreaking to see what these people are going through. Well, especially with flooding because there's not much you can do. You can move to the second floor if you have, a, have to, but then all the mold and everything comes. So so you're really not in a Well, I mean, just to move them to be safe until the water subsides. Yeah. yeah. And then when you come back, you got a nightmare on your hands, of course. Yeah. So I saw an interesting uh, video yeah. and some takes. You know, some people uh, do believe that that some of this flooding may have been sort of a man-made event, some of these uh, water reactors, vaporizers of the industry around there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pretty interesting. Uh, you know, don't really understand why that would be, but, uh, you know, we have to kind of take a look at things when they don't really go the way nature does. There's, there's a lot about our weather that is not natural anymore. And I follow a couple guys on YouTube and so forth that... You know, really believe that there really is no uh, natural weather anymore, that it's all being manipulated yeah, way right. beyond HARP 
and all of these things. Yeah, and I think it's mostly, uh, I don't think we can really control a, a lot of it. So mm -hmm. whatever they're doing, if they're spraying stuff and that, I don't think it has that much of an effect. I think you can do some local uh, seeding of clouds and get the rain coming. You I have to watch this video yeah. from well, this I area. I watched a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, the main wild. thing I wanted to let people know is uh, now is the time to repair. And uh, right. we've got winter coming up, and all indications are that winter is going to be a lot earlier this year with cold fronts starting maybe as soon as next week and another cold front behind that. And probably snow in Canada and parts of the United States are coming very early this year. So, you know, time now is to prepare and get some food in there. And uh, my wife and I have uh, got about three months worth of food and we're thinking of expanding that to about a year just to be sure that we have it and then we can kind of recycle this stuff as we go and that's what they're teaching people yeah. that really it's about buying the things that you know and that last and just kind of work out of your own grocery store so to speak yeah i think yeah. that's wise yeah yeah. I think so Another thing too. I wanted to mention in the news uh, was uh, the Amazon acquisition, of course, of Whole Foods. Speaking of food prices, this has yeah. been a positive impact. Yeah, very it's like positive. they came in and said, we're going to cut out all this excess. Yeah, I just wonder how long this is going to last with food prices going up everywhere. And we see a lot of the reports, too, of, uh, let me just see if I can bring this up when uh, we talk about yeah it says that uh, while you're looking for that it says that the whole foods on 57th street in manhattan uh they dropped um apples down from 199 uh <coughs> to 199 from 349 a pound avocados went from went to 199 cents from 279 significant slashes and uh they they would put on the signs um you know more to come so you know a lot of people whole foods has gotten that name whole food whole paycheck <laughs> for a reason. And so the other thing that's happening is that shrink uh, inflation, which is in Britain, they call this, and a lot of the packaged food that they're seeing are uh, right. A they're not bit ra they're not raising the prices. They're lowering the amount of product that you get for your yeah. dollars. And I think These this is happening here too, especially oh, in cereals, things like that. So absolutely, uh, if you're buying canned foods and things, you're going to find uh, just a little bit less in these things, but the mm -hmm. price is going to remain the same. And I have mentioned that over the last. Uh, I'd say year we've noticed prices going up in meats and uh, in vegetables also. So uh, yeah, the real the inflation numbers just can't be real. They're not real to people. Yeah, and of course we are in a low inflation type of period for the last decade or so, saying uh, one to three percent. But when you consider this, this is a jump of. 20 or 30 percent in food prices. I feel it in my pocket, I'm sure, if you're they, on a limited uh, budget. You're well, they say the, infl the real inflation rate is double digit. Yeah. N what they seems, quote is not, they don't right. use the right numbers. So, <clears throat> this is a good time to stay healthy. So, I want to remind people that uh, we have just a couple of days left of the 20, uh, I think it's $25 off. Right. Of the, the prime ledge, which is normally $89 a month. That's a good thing to stock up on. It's the good thing to stock up on. So if you have, want an extra bottle, now's the time to buy it if you're already on subscribed to this. So please pick that up. Uh, once a month, you get it right to your door for $89 right now, minus the $25. And when we get back, we're going to tell you what is 10 times dirtier than a toilet seat. You might be surprised. It needs around you all the time. Stick with good. us. So pick up that Health Signals newsletter. Only $10 a month gets you two issues and only coming up next week folks so stick around we'll be right back You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Uh, take a second thought about using their cell phones everywhere from their morning commute to the dinner table to the doctor's office and into the throne right <laughs> but research shows that cell phones are far dirtier than most people think and the more germs they collect the more germs you touch well, you know, we kind of know on this show that, you know, germs aren't really the issue. It's the terrain and that you keep yourself healthy. We're, there's germs everywhere. You right. know, we need to keep ourselves healthy. But we need to be kind of conscious of this because we are kind of using these in all kinds of places. They're really kind of like we're attached to the hip, to these phones. I'm just wondering if we do use, our, and we do use our cell phones a lot, we're touching them a lot because we're texting and then we bring them up and uh, we're using them that way. And they are dirty. I noticed that. And not often I clean mine. I mean, I use the cloth and everything. But then actually they say the, mic the, the microfiber cloths. I mean, again, mm. germs are pushed away. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if this actually helps boost our immune system any. Yeah. When I read these articles, um, I, I see this same pattern of, of kind of creating fear of the germ. Yeah. Oh, uh, the germ. And we know that washing our hands is important because there there's microbiome on our skin. And much of that microbiome is what is responsible for keeping us healthy. So we need to do both. We need to encourage those good microbes and be wary of kind of keeping the bad ones in, intact. But, um, you know, the, the best thing to do is just to make sure you have good hand washing. We're coming into the season. We're coming into the fall. It's time to prepare, time to put a few things away, time to build the immune system so we can handle lower light, perhaps less time outdoors where we can get the magnetism of the earth. So it's really time to to, to get yeah. healthy. Some of the studies found serious uh, pathogens on cell phones, including Staphylococcus, uh, MRS, MRSA, and, MRSA mm -hmm. and E. coli. Uh, just having these microbes on your phone won't automatically make you sick. No, and because again, it's about the terrain. Yeah, it's but about don't your let own them immune enter system. your system. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Viruses can also spread on phones if a person is sick. I think that's what we have to really watch out for: is not our germs as much as maybe somebody else's germs that mix with ours. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if somebody's coughing on your phone and then you start using your phone, I think they, that might be more of a concern. Because like I said, I don't really, I mean, I don't put the alcohol on my phone. I don't use water. Basically, I'm just using... It does say things. to a, a real quick way to clean your phone is a damp rag with a touch of alcohol. Yeah. Or alcohol dampened with some water. Uh, just do a quick wipe, and that's probably a good idea. And that might be a good use for those little liquids that we all have, uh, you know, and we're not using on our hands and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't know. They might hurt the screen, though. 
I don't know. Well, yeah. it's basically just alcohol. A lot of them are, but and, they've also but got they, a lot of other chemicals. So. Yeah, they got a lot of crap in it, but, uh, that's for sure. But uh, I thought I'd bring this to the attention merely because we do use these devices a lot. I'm using them less and less up to my uh, because uh, up to my face because I have these little new Apple earbuds, which are kind of cool, the little sticks. Yeah, but do you, what do you think about those? I mean, I kind of decided not to do those because again, it's it's that that wire Wi-Fi going right to your ears. I think a corded mm -hmm. earplugs. Well, yeah, we got but you know why you know why they did that though? <laughs> why? Because to sell them, I think. Yeah, to sell them. Yeah, to make you have to have a certain kind of earbud. Well, yeah, plus we and have. Dang, if I didn't lose that little connector. You're kidding me. You know how it comes with the phone. No. You know, what can it? Give me in the little box. With the, I, with the iPhone Seven, you get a little connector so that you can still use. Oh yeah, but you can also plug them into your uh, uh, that little the little box. You're talking about the pen. No, no, no. I'm no? talking about when you bought when I bought my iPhone Seven. There came a little wire connector so that I could use these old earbuds because old oh, earbuds. Oh, that, yeah, yeah the old and, earbuds. and I've misplaced one. I'm sure I can pick up another one. But yeah. well, the new ones are kind of cool though. There's no wires, which I really like. You know, and it's, I, there's not a big box sitting in your head too, and so that I never liked that too much. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm using it more and more. And do you I find like it those? Earbuds? I do like those earbuds, and they're really clear. They're probably the clearest earbuds I've ever used. Huh. Even the, better than the wired ones, I think. So they have made a good product. I guess we'll find in the, out in 20 years whether I get brain cancer or not from them. But anyway, that's... Uh, wow, you know, that's, you know, that's, that, that is our issue. That's, we're going to talk more about that, Nico. You and I have been talking about that, that the issue of non-nanometer, non-native EMFs is probably the big 900-pound gorilla. Maybe, maybe the, so. the 1,200-pound gorilla. There's just a lot of evidence of... Um, what's going on with that, and we need to try and minimize it. But you know, after we were talking about germs and on the cell phones, mm -hmm. I think it might be a good time to talk about this article that was in bio, bioengineering.org that found that antibiotics uh, are weaken the body's ability to fight off disease. How about that? I think there's still a lot of people that um, place antibiotics on a, on a throne, and although they have been known to, f to save lives in critical illness, uh, the abuse of antibiotics, as we have done for indiscriminate use, prescribing antibiotics when these are viral conditions and they're not really going to do any good. Well, the other concern to me when I think of antibiotics, because I don't take much antibiotics, the last uh, time I took it was a few years ago because I had a really bad round of bronchitis, which I'm susceptible to. But uh, this year when I got it, I decided not to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was a good decision on my part. It took a little bit longer to get rid of it, but it seems like uh, it, it was a good result. Uh, I worry more about the antibiotics that we're using in the feed and we're using, you know, that's in our water. The, the ones that we don't have any control over getting. Yeah, those right. are more concerned for me because I can control what I put in my body. And if I decide to use antibiotics for one reason or another, that's my decision. But when they're in our uh, food and when they're in our water because of the runoff from agriculture, you know, it, that's the concern for me. So I make sure that everything I pick is organic if it's uh, made from plant food and it's organic and grass-fed and humanely uh, used, no antibiotics used, no anything natural in my meat and in my fish. And again, uh, we had that article from Nora Gigatas talking about fish, how <clears throat> fish was one of our real primal foods, but maybe not so much these days. Because, because of the of, farm raised. Because, well, the farm raised, and then now, of course, the water is polluted with all these antibiotics, and the fish use the water just to breathe. Sure. So, uh, you know, that's really a concern to me. So it makes it more and more uh, valuable to me to go to the store and know that I can buy these things that are still sustainable but don't have the antibiotics. You know? Yes, yes, exactly. So, and that, so another reason <clears throat> that uh, for doctors to avoid the overuse of antibiotics is the fact that there's new research that shows that, re that a reduction in the variety of microbes in the gut interferes with the immune system's ability to fight off disease, it interferes <clears throat> with the immune system's ability to produce white blood cells, which are the fighters. And this was found at my family university, University of Virginia School of Medicine, mm -hmm. and they found that these antibiotic use uh, enhampers the neutrophil, who's really the uh, white blood cell that is uh, most responsible for that first line of defense. Yeah, and in addition, the in, uh, test, uh, in te oh, I can't even pronounce the it. intestinal barrier. The intestinal barrier that protects uh, against disease was compromised when they did these studies in mice, mm -hmm. and uh, that makes a lot of sense that that's going on. 
Oh, absolutely. And um, the, the researchers there at the University of Virginia were seeking to understand the role of gut microbiome, the gut microbiome, the microorganisms that live within us. Right. And they really were studying you know, just exactly what happened when they were infected and how they responded to fight this off. And um, in addition to the intestinal barrier that protects against disease, um, that was compromised, the disruption of the microbiome reduced production of a key cellular protein vital to the barrier, the gut barrier's effectiveness. I think this is um, uh, SIGA, and this is actually, I do some, help people do some saliva tests, and I see almost everyone's low in that, so our yeah. guts have really been under assault. Yeah, we know that for sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, folks, stick around. Uh, we got a lot more. Please pick up the Health Signals newsletter. $10 a month gets it to you on the first and third Tuesday of every month. And during the break, please pick up that Primal Edge, which is on sale at $25 discount right now. Only a couple more days left, so you get it right now, folks. We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This says segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about traveling and being, uh, you know, primal. Uh, yeah, staying, staying true to primal while you're Yeah, so we were gone for four days, uh, went down to the marathon to see some friends, play a little music with them, which was really cool. Uh, and uh, one of the things we do is we do prepare, uh, you know, we got that six hour ride down the marathon from our place. So uh, instead of stopping, my wife usually has a lot of boiled eggs, which is the number one food for the road, I think. Mm -hmm. They're easy to keep. Uh, we keep a nice cooler and throw some uh, things in there to keep it cool. And then at the hotel, we can uh, either get the ice or refreeze those things. 
But uh, some of the things that uh, mentioned in this article is called the Definitive Guide to Traveling on a Paleo Diet. Uh, you know, if you do find it challenging, there's some simple tricks you can do. Uh, simple things like boiling some eggs, maybe having some nuts for the road, uh, besides the passengers. Yeah, so, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles, however you're traveling, you can think ahead and bring some foods that keep you on track with your anti-inflammatory type of diet. Right. You know, here are some ideas. You can make lettuce wraps using uh, romaine lettuce. And folks, you can even use collard greens, which are even more firm, and yep. they're quite delicious. Very good. Um, you know, steak salads, bring some scrambled eggs that are already, pr you know, scrambled or hard-boiled is what I like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... Many times we find that when we stop on the road, the choices do not fit this diet or lifestyle. In fact, no, it's really rather remarkable when you go to the grocery store and you go, that's not on the plan. That's not on the plan. <laughs> yeah. You really uh, could shop in a much smaller store if we didn't have all this junk. Yeah, but you could still go into like even a fast food place and get uh, some uh, steak salad, uh, some lettuce wraps, uh, lettuce burgers, that type of thing. Not the best, but still... Uh, able to get by on that. The other thing that uh, is easy to find, I think, is mostly breakfast is the easiest thing on the road. Uh, that isn't too bad, even if you stop in have one of these little... breakfast for dinner. Yeah, have breakfast like anytime, it. which is good. And even these small places, at least the eggs, maybe they're not pasture-raised, but they're still eggs, and they still have that good fat in them. So, uh, you know, the choices are not prime, but if you plan a little bit ahead and take a little bit of food with you, then you're going to be all right. Some of the other things you can do is uh, uh, legumes, they say, you know, uh, frozen peas. The, these are good things to use as ice. Right, because they're not going to. I use that on a boo-boo. Yeah. A bag of peas because it right. kind of molds to it. It's exactly. soft, right? So mm -hmm. these are things you can use. I, since I got a lot of food shipped to me over the years, I save those little bricks that you can refreeze. Mm -hmm. And they usually come in those styrofoam things. And a lot of times I'll take a styrofoam and then toss it, you know, when I'm at my destination. But I've got a nice real great cooler, and it really keeps things about three days if you don't open it too much. Really? So that's pretty good. What kind of cooler is that? Uh, it's one of the RCO coolers, I think. It's just uh, like the Yeti, only less expensive. Mm -hmm. You can find them. So it really is, almost becomes like a portable refrigerator. Yeah, we had a portable refrigerator that I found years ago that was relatively inexpensive for about 100 bucks. But the real good ones run 600 to $800, and I just didn't want to... Uh, swing for that because most of my trips are, are short yeah and it's easy to get uh, a little bit of ice on the road or you can put in a plastic bag and uh, that works quite well too so there's a lot of uh things you can do so now, what are some things that you might put in your paleo meal you know sometimes it can be leftovers that you had from definitely. a meal before you left yeah you know this might be leftover steak or chicken from a dinner before you leave mm -hmm. <clears throat> you good. know it cut into small bite-sized pieces have some kale or romaine lettuce and, um, and maybe some carrots or an avocado to give that creamy, rich fat. And, um, you know, maybe a piece of fruit or something here or there. Yeah, there's, an, there's a list here of homemade, no salt added uh, beef jerky. You can make that at home if you want to. You can pick it up at the store. Hard boiled eggs, like I said, tuna with the easy open lids. A lot of them have foil pouches now, very easy to access. Sardines olives, seaweed such as nori, homemade unsalted uh, kale chips, and the raw unsalted nuts. I would use the uh, salt myself. Uh, things you can carry that are fresh produce, uh, carrots and celery, broccoli, cherries, tomatoes, apples, pears, tangerines, avocados, and berries. You can take those things along and they last quite a long time. That's right. And the, and the thing to think is that these are all fresh things and um, it'll keep you from making that stop. Of course, if you're already on a paleo, primal paleo, ketogenic, tr wise traditions uh, diet, you're not going to be subject to the crazy cravings. Right. That, that, that helps a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I start, I, I think about this, you know, mm -hmm. in like we were, we've been talking, you and I personally have been talking a lot about being prepared, you know, in, in light of these, this natural disaster up there in Texas and it could happen anywhere. I mean, there could be all kinds of things that happens. We talk a lot about what could happen with a solar flare. It really makes sense to to start working at being prepared by preparing your body to withstand periods of time without food. Folks, this six-plus meal a day 
story that yeah. people have been doing is not doing anything good for your metabolism. And these are the people that have to pull off every hour and a half mm -hmm. to eat something. That's not sustainable, especially in an emergency situation. We have to learn to get our energy from our foods and be able to continue on. When yeah, food. and uh, we talked uh, last week about fasting. And what a perfect opportunity right here. I think fasting is a tremendous skill. I think it's a skill that we should have not just for our health, but for our survivability. Yeah, and of course, if you're on a standard American diet and you go to fast, then that could uh, complicate things because you're going to get very hungry and angry and driving uh, and anger don't mix. So uh, you're, dro you're dropping your sugar. And so you have to prepare it. But, you know, let's talk about that, Nico. Okay. Um, you know, we're talking about foods to bring along, but what if we find ourselves in the wilderness? You had this great little tips here, wilderness survival foods. Mm -hmm. You know, do most of us even know what is eatable or edible, however you want to say it, potatoes, potato, oh. uh, you know, out in the wilderness? I think a lot of people are afraid. We've been told to be afraid of what's in our environment. And we need to start looking at what's edible. And I want to kind of go through this because okay. I think everyone needs to know it. Knowing core survival foods is a key to wilderness survival or survival in the event of a catastrophe. Through, though humans can survive for up to three weeks without food, especially when we're fat adapted mm -hmm. and have become good at fasting, we probably wouldn't choose to go that long. And the natural environments are filled with a variety of items that can meet our nutritional needs and may actually be better because they're still wild foods. Yeah, and they and, say plants uh, can provide a lot of uh, readily available foods, though insects and small game can support your dietary needs in a survival situation. Uh, probably pretty easy to pick out uh, little uh, worms and bugs. Uh, you know, insects are a great uh, source of protein, uh, but not the kinds that have more legs, like the you know, the spiders and things like yeah, it that. Yes, says ants, grubs, and grasshoppers can be eaten. A good way to get over our natural resistance to eating <coughs> bugs is to toss them into a stew with other ingredients. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of them have a kind of a nutty flavor, ants and things. Have you ever, ever eaten ants? I really haven't gotten around yeah, to they're, eating Yeah, they're ant. kind of a nutty omelet. I've eaten cricket omelet. protein. Yeah, cricket, cricket protein is good, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, even worms are not bad tasting. I remember as a kid chewing on a worm going, ah. To freak out my sister, yeah. You do that. You <laughs> sound just yeah. like my brother. Oh, really? Were you guys how, like, just in a couple years of our... My yeah, sister was two years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's kind yeah. of thing. Okay, so we said insects, and there's also fish. All freshwater fish in North America are edible. Oh, I didn't know that. All yeah. freshwater fish. And all grasses are edible. In I mean, a survivable situation, fish can be caught using a sharpened stick as a fish spear. For small minnows, a t-shirt can be used as a fishnet. That's pretty so cool. So if you were in a creek. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll continue yeah, this because I think this is important. I feel like we all need to know these things. I'm, we'll right, I'm right on board with you. We'll hmm. be right back, folks. Stick around. The number here is 877-927-6648. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, the 800th edition of The Gold Report will be published next Monday. To celebrate the last 15 and a half years of calling the gold market, I'm doing a special promotion. You can receive 60 weeks of The Gold Report for only $600. That is $10 a week, which is a savings of 50% off the regular price. If you want to understand the entire supply and demand equations that move the gold market, including where the XAU, HUI, and mining equities are looking to trade, if you want to understand the correlation between the dollar, the yen, the South African rand, bonds, and gold, the gold report is for you. I'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop for each equity, ETF, future, or option trade. 
The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter with a focus on building real wealth to a successful portfolio of gold and silver equities. You can take advantage of this special promotion until August 27th. That's 60 weeks of The Gold Report for $600, which is a 50% savings. Go to the front page of TFNN.com or call 877-518-9190 and order now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're learning what are some wilderness survival foods, because we all need to know what we could eat if we had to eat it. And I see Matt from Vail. Hey, Matt. Matt says, fasting is where it's at, 24-hour fast once or twice a week and 16 to 18 hours overnight for him. So he's a fat-adapted, fasting-savvy uh, guy. Yeah, and, and you he can looks, tell just by looking at him. And he yeah. looks good, he too. He looks good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. no doubt. Nice specimen there. So we're talking a little bit about uh, finding food out in the wild, which we're probably not really used to doing. But here are some of the things. I thought that was neat. Just use your T-shirt to catch some minnows. Very in a cool. Creek. I mean, we've got to learn. I mean, I don't think we were ever really taught these survival things. I mean, what happened to Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts? You know? Yeah, and if you look <laughs> at YouTube, there's a lot of videos on there showing people in Thailand and all these little, uh, mostly their kids out there fishing and getting snakes and things and how they do that very inventive thing so I encourage everybody to look at YouTube and look those things up because you're going to learn a lot about them things that you probably don't think of yourself you mentioned insects and fish and now we're on birds yeah birds are also edible game birds such as grouse and pheas pheasants can be captured using snares hunting implements such as throwing a stick uh, though it can be very difficult if you yeah, have practiced. Yeah, most of us haven't these, practiced all these kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, these are things that as a kid we always practiced and always did and kind of lost along the way. Now we're adults and we don't do, do that anymore. Do you know how to do archery? I have done some archery. I'm not an expert at it, but uh, I have some friends that were archers, and, uh, you know, it's a very cool craft. Mm -hmm. And same with guns. I'm not really familiar with guns, but I do use them. Uh, I do have, uh, you know, some something to protect myself yep so i think that's important to have uh, yeah so of course with States. birds they're also their eggs can be a yeah. survival food if, particularly in the spring and small mammals these small mammals include squirrels and rabbits probably were very much part of the early human diet to begin with yeah and the squirrels traps, and rabbits um, uh, i often see on some of these alaskan shows people using traps and they show you how to set them up and that's very useful to know how to do that uh, you know the more you know about nature the better um and you know in addition to those of course we've got the foods from the plant kingdom i think this was interesting the cattail you know, you look at the cattail. I grew up in uh, southern United States, and the cattail is, you know, near the creeks and the rivers and so forth, and it's kind of that almost like bottle brush type of thing. But they call the cattail the supermarket of the swamp. Yeah, you can cut those, and there's a lot of nice starch inside those stalks. And they even say no matter here, what the, season it is. the pollen heads can be eaten. I've never done that and never even thought about that, but roots and the shoots definitely can be eaten. Uh, and conifers, which are your pines, your pine trees, the inner right. bark of a conifer, known as the cambium layer, is full of sugar, starches, and calories. Yeah. You know, the pine tree is, uh, you know, in the world of essential oils, just a fabulous natural Yeah, you know, and the chemistry. sap uh, on the side of the tree when it's oozing out as a kid. I remember going through our property. We had about 100 acres up there in Canada, and uh -huh. I used to peruse that, and I used to chew on that, which is very bitter in the beginning, but then it gets to the sugar layer, and it sweetens up as you chew. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It says, um, 
It can be eaten on most evergreen cone-bearing trees, uh, talking about the um, sugar, starch, and calories, except for you, identified by its red berries in which all parts are poisonous. The inner bark should be scraped out and cooked to convert the fibers into a more digestible form. Mm. Would never have known that. Yeah. Um, all grasses are edible. The leaves can be chewed and juices swallowed, though you have to spit up the undigestible fibers because they're kind of uh, really sharp. Mm -hmm. So they're not really good for the Yeah, they're digestive. designed to keep yeah. you from eating You can all see, up. of course, when uh, uh, we see our pets, if they're not feeling well, have stomach problems, they'll go out and eat some grass for that. Oak trees and things like that, acorns produced by them, they're very bitter, but if you put them in a bag and set them in a stream for a few days and then boil... They soften. They soften, and then you can boil them, and they can be eaten, and then you can do that pretty much with any nuts. Uh, most nuts out in the wild tend to be a little bit different. Uh, they're not uh, producing the same enzymes because we we have been sweetening them up and things. So mm -hmm. you really have to be careful with them, but you have to really soak them for a few days in a stream, which is really good with that structured water going through the stream. Right. And then you do have to boil them because the water is inside that, and these days we're not sure about the water. And too, there are so. lots of poisonous lookalikes, folks, so it's probably a yeah. good idea. Part, put, add this to your survival list. It's great to get a field guide yeah. uh, to learn about uh, edible foods. Especially in your area. So I've got a book on trees and shrubs and bushes and edible things on those in Florida, specific mm -hmm. to Florida, if we do run into problems there. So there's a lot of things on the web today, and thank goodness for the international web where we can find a lot of these things out. And actually, you can on YouTube, you can see how the people use them and how they've actually adapted to using a lot of these products and there's a lot of people out there uh, that uh, have a lot of experience at that. I don't but uh, I think I can uh, survive out there if I put my mind to it and I'm forced to it. Yeah well I think that you have been in that mindset for some time and it's, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very attractive to me mm -hmm. to see people um, that are being prepared. I mm -hmm. think being prepared it's it's it makes you feel that the people are capable. Yeah, I feel myself semi-prepared. I don't think I'm prepared at all. I think I'm. I I think I can get along, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, I do have implements like uh, stuff to purify water in emergency. I do have that bug out bag that I take everywhere with me when I'm going out of town, uh, and uh, I make sure we do have enough food when I, we're on the road. Because if something does happen, then uh, then. Uh, you know, being prepared and somewhat is, is going to be a big help. Well, you have this other article that we put in here from Popular Mechanics, How to Know What You Can and Can't Eat in the Wilderness. This mm -hmm. might be great to add to the newsletter because yeah. it's kind of a con continuation. It's filled with a lot of videos, or a few videos actually, a couple of videos here that really give you an idea. These are from, <clears throat> a lot of the tips come from people who were part of the History Channel's uh, show alone, which I never did watch that. Did you watch any of those series? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. was it good? Yeah. Of how good. people um, chose to survive, right? Yeah. It's, so it says you'd be is... really surprised to see what you can eat out there. The wilderness is full of edible plants, as we discussed, and yeah, creatures for the survivalists. This was in Popular Mechanics. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, okay. But it was but it's focusing on the people yeah. who were part of that series alone on the right. history on the history channel right. so again we a lot of the stuff that we discussed but insects are usually safe other bugs are not yeah and uh, when you're talking about uh, the uh, plant food mm -hmm. you're talking that uh, the vivid colors are the things to stay away from it's like it's a warning from. sign it's a, exactly like a warning sign although dark green is really good usually it says usually for survivals I can lean on crickets, grasshoppers, things like that. He says termites, ants, slugs, uh, snails, earthworms because it can be hard to actually capture an animal or catch a fish. So if you're out there without any implements then uh, then uh, you have to kind of rely on the bugs and things you can find. But earlier. this one woman who teaches edible and medicinal plants, or it's actually a guy named Kay, who says you never eat a plant that you cannot positively identify. So flora can be trickier to identify than fauna. Yeah, remember that uh, it's uh, stay away from the bright colors.
That's Do right. your homework before eating plants. Isn't it interesting that uh, we consider plants as food, but uh, most of it's really medicinal. This is the way our ancestors treated plants is mostly medicine. Right. Or the medicine chest. And they could the very plants. well be uh, a problem if you eat too much of it. Mm -hmm. And also the idea that you want to cook your food if you can. Um, if you're in that situation that you have fire starter, and again, that's something else. Mm -hmm. You want to have the ability to start a fire. You have to know how to do it, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. Located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage, you can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com Educating Investors Up next 9 before 9 with John Logan on TFNN and welcome back I wanted to uh, go uh, this impact of a six-week non-energy restricted ketogenic diet on physical fitness body composition and uh, the perimeters in uh, healthy adults this is a research article and yeah give us some background on the well first abstract. of all ketogenic diet very low carbohydrate high fat and adequate protein without limiting calories induces different uh, metabolic adaptions and uh, what they found at the end of this results is wasn't too much of a change to uh, and it was only a six six week study and that's the reason I wanted to bring it up because we've talked many times about especially athletes and they tested these people on their ability to do things and they didn't find much difference and they found actually a little bit less ability because in the, the athletes in, in the athletes and the reason I mention this is I've said many many times that athletes take a long time to adapt even though maybe two weeks you get and you're burning the, those calories through fat 
your body is not used to it and takes about a year to build up the, the athletic body that our, we used to have as ancient ancestors. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to realize that these results from this study are not accurate until about a year later. Now, if they keep these people on it for a year and then look at the results, are they, I think they're going to find a huge difference in the ability of the athletes. Now, generally, if you're not athletic and you're not doing a lot of exercise and you get adapted in that six-week period, I think your abilities actually can mm -hmm. go up there. But, you know, as a, as a holistic practitioner <coughs> working with people, there are many of us that have a, even a harder time. I, I mean, the athlete has a tough time, you know, because it needs that quick burst of energy. But the average day person, and particularly sometimes women, I think it takes them a little longer. It can, and I, So really the point is don't be discouraged. Six weeks so. is not long enough to change a diet that you've been, uh, our ability to switch to a different fuel source after you've been using a different one for the majority of your life. I think optimally. I think you can switch fa faster. Some people like two weeks, some people two months, some people six months. But even if you're adapted to it and you know you're in ketosis for the majority of the day and night, you may not have the utilization of that full spectrum of accessing the fat because you may not have hydrochloric acid boost. You may not... Uh, uh, you know, your pancreas uh, may not be putting out the right stuff. Oh, you still have bile. stress hormones. The body at first sees this as a um, as a threat, and it okay. stays that's, with that's a, a releasing yeah. cortisol. Yeah. And it says, wait a minute, I don't know if What's I'm going to have enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it has to get used to the actual idea of the whole thing. It needs to saturate within you. And I noticed the change pretty fast and was pretty happy, but it was about a year until physically I could see that it was a big In terms boost. of your training and yeah. your exercise and yeah. your ability. Yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, let's, let's talk about some of your competitions in the jiu-jitsu world where you uh, really, you prepped while those other kids were loading carbs, Yeah, right? They're eating rice and they're doing all this stuff to... <clears throat> you know, stack their carbs, you know, for competition, you were eating salmon and butter. Yeah, salmon and butter and uh, really uh, having great water and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and not eating a lot the days of competition. And uh, a lot of times my fights would be two or four in the afternoon and not having eaten all day and still having the energy to do some of those things and representing pretty well. So uh, <clears throat> it did... Uh, it did help me a lot, and thank goodness, 10 years we've been pretty much into this, mm -hmm. 10 years into jiu-jitsu too, so it kind of correlates with the jiu-jitsu, but I do feel like I've made really a lot of gains, and now it's pretty much smooth sailing. I can uh, be in ketosis, I can be knocked out of ketosis, I can get back in real easy, I can almost feel the changes taking place, but one thing I don't get anymore is that real hunger pains. I don't get uh, nutsy in the head because I haven't eaten, yeah. and that's the, the real blessing of well, this Well, the whole nutsy thing. in the head is what's going to happen <clears throat> in the event of, um, you know, these floods and so forth. People do not, boy, oh boy. do not uh, act nice when food is in shortage, especially people that are burning sugar and they, they haven't eaten in a whole two hours and they're looking for that food. So start adapting yourself. It's better for your health and it's better for being prepared for what may come our way. Right. But we hope what comes your way the rest of today is a great day. That's for sure. And thanks so for sticking around, and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.